Welcome back to the third part of making scary zombie soccer. We've made the game, now we're going to put some zombie characters in it. So to get those, we'll go to Mixamo, which is Mixamo.com, which is a free service. All you need is to sign in with your Adobe Creative Cloud account. It doesn't even have to be a paid account to get in, and Mixamo is free as well. There's two options. There's characters and animations. Click on characters and from there you can do a search of the character you want. If you type in zombie you'll get all sorts of zombies that you can use. Um, I'm going to use this one that I've used before because she's already loaded in. Once you have picked the character you want click on find animations and then you want to go over and put in I'm going to put zombie in. There's lots of zombie animations you're looking for a walk or a run animation so in here you'll find lots of different ones the one that I want is this one here okay so this is a pretty typical zombie kind of walk that you see zombies doing I guess now once you've done that you want to download click on download and this will come up in the format, if you select the uh, box there, it'll go FBX for Unity. So FBX is the model file format, and the special one for Unity is marked there. Everything else, you just want to leave the same. Of course, you want the skin, otherwise you won't get the model and all the textures. Click on Download, and then that will download an FBX file. Just put that on your desktop where you can get hold of it. Back in Unity, you want to grab hold of that FBX that you just downloaded and drag and drop it into your Assets folder and that will import it into Unity. Now it's going to ask you if you want to fix the normals. You can fix them on your model. Now this is going to create a little bit of an issue with the textures uh, and I'm not sure why Mixamo haven't fixed this because it's been a long standing issue. Anyway, uh, let's go to the scene. I'm just going to go down here and grab your zombie character that you just brought into assets and drag and drop it into the scene. And I'm just going to zoom in on this character to have a look if she's got the issue I'm talking about. Yep, yeah, you can see there. So see, you can see her eyeballs. And that's because the materials aren't quite compatible with Unity, but it's easy enough to fix those. You'll need to find the material that's on her and in the materials here you've got a zombie diffuse and if you just select that and over in the inspector just change it from standard to uh, legacy shader and pick one of them like the bump diffuse which is the top one on my screen and you'll see that that will immediately fix those texture problems for you. Right so what we're going to do with our zombie character if we go back into the assets is to turn her into a nav mesh agent. So first of all, let's get rid of the capsules. And to our zombie, let me just rename her like that. We'll attach the play ball script. So drag that on there. And let's have her working with the red goal. So we'll give her the red goal as the goal transform and the ball for the ball. We're also going to add a component of the nav mesh agent like that. She will also need a capsule collider that you can set to the right size if we can see it. I think it's just down the bottom might need to be made a bit bigger I'll lift it up into the center of her body and just change its height this really is a collider for kicking the ball around so it doesn't really matter if it's not too accurate and with that you want to add a rigid body as well and make it is kinematic all right, so she's all set up to go for the ball. So let's just press play and see what we get. Okay, so there she goes. 
Now, if you want to scale her up, because she is a little bit small, you can go over to the inspector and change her scale in the uh, transform. So let's just make her two, two, and two. And you'll see that everything else attached will also get scaled up as well. So it's not going to affect that or, or of your code. Right, so now we want to animate her. Now she has animations on her that came with the model you got from Mixamo, but we need to connect them to the uh, model itself. So select the zombie in the hierarchy. Over in the inspector, there is an animator component. If you haven't done this before, I am going to step you through it right now, so don't panic. We need to create a animator controller to put into here. So go over to the project, create, and look for animator controller. It's down the list and it's off my screen. Select it and you'll get an icon that looks like this. Let's call this um, zombie. It doesn't really matter. And then we're going to select her again in the hierarchy. Grab that controller you just made and drag and drop it up into the animator so that it's there. This controller is where you define all of the animations. We're only having her do that walk. So double click on that and you'll get this screen open, which is where you set up your animations. With one animation, it's really easy. Find your model in the project and next to it, there'll be a little play button. But if you click on it, it will fold out and you'll get all these other things going on. You'll also see in there something that looks like a gray box with a play button on it. This is your animation. Select that and drag it into this animator view. It's going to go orange, which means that it's the default animation and that means it'll run straight away. Let's just press play at this point because we've already connected the animator and have a look what we're getting. Okay, the animation is playing. It's a bit slow and you can see now if you have a look, it's also stopped. We want it to loop. So by default, when these animations come in, they're not going to loop. To make it loop, you want to go back and find the animation that you dragged into the animator and click on it. Over in the inspector, click on edit. And then underneath all this stuff, under this little timeline, there's this box called loop time. Click that box and then click apply. And now if we press play, you'll find that she will loop over and over through that walking animation. Okay, now you'll see in this case that there's a bit of a weird jitter and that's because the animation I got, if I stop playing, and we have a look down here in this animation view, is that she walks along and does this walk, but then the loop pops her back to the start here. So the animation is moving, but the character's transform isn't moving. And that gets confusing when you're trying to move things around on the screen. So in this same view where you set up the loop, you want to click on this loop pose as well. And then if you click apply and watch what's going on in this animation here is that her transform is not moving. She's not moving. She's just animated on the spot. And that's fine for us because our nav mesh agent is doing the moving. We don't want the animation in this case. And that will stop your animation from popping back after it's finished its cycle. If you downloaded a different animation from Mixamo, chances are that it's already animated on the spot and you won't need to do this. But that's how you fix that problem. The other problem is when we press play, the zombie's actually sliding around because she's moving much faster than her animation is allowing for her to. And we can fix that up by speeding up the animation. You could slow her nav mesh agent down if you go over into the nav mesh agent and change this speed. 
I've currently got it set to one, which is going to be quite slow anyway, but you can see that her animations are still way too slow for moving at one. Go over to your animator where you've got your zombie walk, select it. Over in the inspector, you'll see that there's a speed value that you can change and that will speed up or slow down your animation. So let's set it to 10 and we'll just press play to see how that works. And now you can see she looks a lot more grounded. She looks like she's taking steps to push herself across the ground, albeit looks very strange. But, you know, she is a zombie, so I guess it kind of works for that. All right, so now that we've got her pretty much the way we want, uh, let's make multiple zombies. Actually, first, let's change her shirt color. So she's got on a white shirt. And therefore, we can t create two different versions of the zombie. So to do that, we're going to go into the materials. Find that zombie material that we were using before and just duplicate it so that you end up with two. So control D on it and let's call one um, zombie red and call the other one zombie blue and she's probably wearing if I go to her body top I can find it there she's got the zombie red on so if we go into that red shader and now change the main color to red we can give her a red top notice it also makes her whole body top part of her body red as well and you could get over that by taking this texture that's on here into Photoshop and just coloring the shirt red but for now we're just doing the easy thing so this is now our red zombie who's going towards the red goal let's duplicate her and we're going to put the blue material onto her so let's just move it out here put the blue material onto the second zombie on her top let's just change it to that one and for the blue material let's set it to a blue shirt okay the head of the zombie in this case is a different part of the anatomy which will be this one here uh, so you can also put the blue material onto that if you want to make her entirely blue and possibly let's do the pants as well I guess because we did that to the other one okay so now she's all blue so we have a red zombie that's going to the red goal blue zombie which will go to the blue goal so we need to put the blue goal down there like that and once we have those we can duplicate them let me name them red Z and blue And then control D on her to make the team. All looking very scary. And the blue one, where is it? It's control D. Now when we press play, go back to the scene so we can see what's going on you'll see that they'll be kicking the ball into their goal and the ball will reset and it'll go back here. Now, currently the ball also resets when it hits any of the bumpers around the edges, which you could, of course, turn that off as well. All right, you can see the random speed also working in there for this guy here. He's gone up to save the day, kick it back. It was pretty clever. Um, yeah, okay, so that's it. You can make much bigger teams as well. If you wanted to have an awful lot of zombies, you could select all of them. And just duplicate, duplicate, and press play. And you end up with some massive teams. So that's the basis of my zombie example I showed right at the beginning of this series. 
The only other thing you really need to do now is to dress your set. So put the ground in, um, change the goals to coffins, have some smoke and particle effects and whatever, and, you know, just go to town with it. So happy Halloween, everybody. Remember, if you're enjoying my tutorials and learning lots, then please subscribe, as well as consider supporting me on Patreon, where you'll get access to all the tutorial project files and lots of other benefits. Also, if you're interested in learning more about AI and Unity, including NavMeshes, then check out my Beginner's AI course for Unity.